Hi, this is question 6 from the AQA Further Pure for January 2013 exam paper. Um, for the first part of this video I'd like you to try the question, so if you can pause the video now and have a go at the question yourself. Ok, well done if you manage to have a go at that. For the next part of the video I'm going to give you a hint as to how you can go about answering the question. Ok, so for um, question 6, we, we are given two matrices given here um, and we're told that they're going to be transformations um, that are represented by these matrices T1 and T2 and we want to give a full geometrical description of these transformations. So um, T1 um, would be represented by this matrix here. So if you just have a look um, and you might spot the the x and the y um, are going to be invariant here and actually the only thing that's going to change are going to be our um, z coordinates are going to become negative so think about what um, transformation makes that happen um, for the second one um, you may want to look at your formula book and your formula book will um, give you an idea as to how you can go about and deciding what transformation that is. Okay, uh, part B. Um, it says uh, find the matrix which represents the transformation T1 followed by T2. So you need to um, remember how I multiply these together in order to get T1 followed by T2. Uh, part C. The linear transformation is represented by this matrix here. So so um, M sub 3. For one particular value of K, um, this transformation has a line of invariant points. So what we're looking for is when I multiply this by a point, which we can call X, Y, Z, the answer I get is still X, Y, Z. So if you, um, if you write that down as an equation and um, you expand that, hopefully you'll be able to find which value of k um, that works for. Once you've got that, um, we should be able to write it in this form over here. Okay, so those are my hints. Um, if you'd like to pause the video now and have a go at the question, and um, I'll go for the answer shortly. Okay, so I'm not going to go over the answer of the um, the question. Starting with part A, um, we need to give the description of the transformations. Well, the first one, um, I mentioned that the Z coordinate um, is the only um, coordinate that's changing and it's become negative. So that tells me that this is going to be a reflection in the line sorry, in the plane, z equals 0. OK, um, and that's um, a i, um, and the second part of a um, for t2. Well, um, this matrix represents um, a rotation. And if we have a quick look at our um, form, whoops, our uh, formula uh, book here. So I've taken uh, the part of the formula book out and we can see that it's going to be a rotation um, through the angle theta about the y-axis. This one matches with the y-axis where cos theta is equal to a half and sine theta is equal to root 3 um, over 2. So um, when cos theta is equal to a half then theta is going to be equal to um, 60 degrees so that tells me that it's going to be a rotation of 60 degrees about the y-axis and there you go now um, just get rid of that for now so For part B,
Okay, we want to find the matrix which represents the transformation T1 followed by T2. So what we need to do here is we need to um, find the product of M2 and M1. So um, I'm going to do multiply those together um, and you can check this but I can spot straight away um, that the that's going to be equal to this with the, with the, the last column that's going to be negative so um, so I'm just going to copy this out as it is so we've got a half zero Okay, so that's what um, the uh, transformation matrix here is going to be for B. So part C, um, we've got the linear transformation um, that's going to be represented by this matrix here, um, where K is a constant. And we need to find the value of K, which is going to give this a line of invariant points. So I'm just going to create a little bit more room for myself um, for this part of the question. So I'm going to start off by writing down the equation that I want to solve. So I want it because I'm looking for a line of invariant points. We're looking for k one three. I want to be able to multiply it by a point x y z. those points to map back onto themselves so we want it to be equal to x, y, z. Okay, so um, if I expand this out, I've got um, k, x plus 2y take away z is equal to x and then I've got x plus y plus z is equal to y I've also got 3x plus 4y plus z is equal to Okay, and if I simplify these, um, I'm going to have... Uh, I've got... X, so I'm going to have k 10.1 x um, plus 2y take away z is equal to 0. I'm also going to have <coughs> over here um, x plus z is equal to 0, and over here I'm going to have 3x plus 4y is equal to 0. Right, so um, I'm going to come down here and I know that um, I'm going to see if I can substitute um, for z and y into here to get all of this in terms of x. So I know that z, um, z is going to be equal to negative x and I've got that from here and I also know um, from here that well, 4y is going to be equal to negative 3x, so y is going to be equal to um, negative 3x over 4. Okay, so um, subbing that into this here, I can say that k take away 1 um, times x plus 2y, so that's going to be take away um, 3x over 2, take away z, so that's going to be um, plus x, 
is going to be equal to zero. Factorizing this is going to give me x. Okay, take away one. Take away three over two plus one is equal to zero. Um, simplifying that, just scroll down a bit. So x times we've got to take, okay, take away three of two equals zero, which means that k would have to be equal to three over two. And there you go, so we've done the first part here, we've, we've found the value of k. Um, for the next part we're asked to find the Cartesian equation of L in this form here. Okay, so um, I already know that x is going to be equal to negative z, um, and I also can get from here that x is going to be equal to negative 4 by over 3. So um, if I come over here and I say that for part 2, I know that x is equal to negative z, and I also know that x is going to be equal to um, negative 4y over 3. Um, that means that x is going to be equal to negative 4y over 3, and that's going to be equal to negative z. Um, so we're almost in this form now. Um, what I want to do is multiply everything by 4. Um, so that will give me x over 4 is equal to y over negative 3, which is going to be equal to z over negative 4. Um, and there you go, we've now got it in this form, where p is 4, q is negative 3, and r is negative 4. OK, hopefully you were able to follow that. Um, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks very much.